Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how the scientist Charles Darwin formulated his theory of evolution by natural selection. You should then be able to describe how fossil, anatomical and molecular evidence supports this theory. Ok, I'm showing you here the scientist Charles Darwin. Darwin was born in the early 1800s and at that time most people in the UK believed in the Bible version of creation. They believed that God created the world and all the living organisms in it. They also believed that the earth was only a few thousand years old. Now scientists at the time were starting to realise that the earth is in fact much older. Geologists studied how the rocks of the earth changed due to natural processes. For example mountains are worn down by erosion due to water and wind. These processes were so slow that they must have been taking place for many millions of years. Paleontologists were also discovering fossils of extinct organisms that lived a very long time ago. So the idea was taking hold in science that the earth is much older than previously thought. In the 1830s Darwin took part in an expedition aboard the HMS Beagle around South America and the Galapagos Islands. He collected thousands of specimens of plants and animals and sent them home to the UK. Some of these were small birds called finches which Darwin had collected on the Galapagos Islands. I'm showing you here four species of finches from the Galapagos Islands. As you can see these finches show variation, for example in beak shape. The large ground finch has a short large beak for cracking hard seeds, whereas the green warbler finch uses its thin pointed beak to search for insects in mosses and leaves. Darwin proposed that beak shape had evolved depending on the food available. For example, consider the habitat where plants produce hard woody seeds. In this habitat if a bird is born with a short large beak it can use its beak to open the seeds for food. This bird is more likely to survive and reproduce in this habitat than a bird with a smaller beak that cannot open the seeds. The offspring can inherit the large beak and over time finches with a large beak become common in that habitat. Now Darwin spent many years gathering evidence to support his theory of evolution. Around the same time the scientist Alfred Russell Wallace was looking at animals and plants in Southeast Asia. Wallace was interested in the evolution of warning colours, for example in insects, as well as how new species form. Wallace developed a theory of evolution very similar to Darwin's. Now fossils are extremely useful in helping us understand evolution. Fossils are the remains of organisms preserved in rock. The older, deeper layers of rock contain fossils of simple organisms such as bacteria. Younger rock near the surface contain fossils of more recent and more complex organisms such as mammals. So fossils support the idea that complex organisms evolved from simpler organisms. By comparing modern day organisms with fossils we can show that they share a common ancestor. For example reptiles and mammals share a common ancestor that lived around 300 million years ago. Now you need to understand that the fossil record is incomplete. The formation of fossils requires very specific conditions which are not commonly found. And some organisms fossilize very rarely, for example animals without a skeleton. And lastly, fossils can easily be destroyed by geological processes such as volcanic activity. Ok, another tool in understanding evolution is comparative anatomy. Comparative anatomy involves comparing the body structures of different species. I'm showing you here the limbs from four species of mammal. As you can see, despite having different functions, the limbs all share a common bone structure. This arrangement of bones is called the pentadactyle limb and we see this in many vertebrate species, not just mammals. Scientists call features like the pentadactyle limb homologous structures. Homologous structures appear different on the surface but have the same internal structure. This suggests that the pentadactyle limb evolved in a common ancestor. Over millions of years as species formed and evolved to live in different habitats, the pentadactyle limb adapted to serve different functions and scientists call this divergent evolution. Ok, I'm showing you here the protein cytochrome C which is involved in aerobic respiration. 
Cytochrome C is found in virtually all eukaryotic organisms and has around 100 amino acids. Amino acids that are essential for the protein's function are nearly always the same between different organisms. Scientists say that these amino acids are highly conserved. However, a number of the amino acids in the protein are not critical for its function. Over time, as species evolve, these non-critical amino acids can change between different species. Scientists call these neutral changes, as they don't affect the function of the protein. By comparing the amino acid sequences of cytochrome C from different species, we can see how closely related these species are. This is called comparative biochemistry. Two species with similar sequences will share a recent common ancestor. For example, the amino acid sequence in cytochrome C is identical between humans and chimpanzees. If the amino acid sequence is very different between two species, then they are less closely related. Scientists look at similarities in other molecules as well, for example DNA or ribosomal RNA. In the next video, we'll start looking at variation.